In terms of ordering phrases, sometimes translators have to choose between the Greek order of phrases and the English order of phrases. And it's one of those tricky things where it's easy to miscommunicate. Let me show you why. In Matthew 9, 2, we read, And behold, bringing to him a paralytic on a stretcher line. Now, two interesting things. The Greek text puts a period there. So the problem is that we don't have an indicative verb. And so translations have to turn the participle into an indicative verb. And the minute you do that, you have to supply a subject, right? So some people brought. So that's one change you have. And in terms of Greek, I should say it's a paralytic, and the paralytic is lying on a stretcher. You have the prepositional phrase that normally you would expect it to come after the participle, but it can come before, it's okay. So epi through the participle form the participial phrase. And we know because of the case ending that it's the paralytic who is lying on the stretcher, not the alto. Okay, if it were the alto lying on a stretcher, the participle would have to be dative. Okay, so that's his background. Here's the question. Where do we normally put indirect objects in English word order? Well, if we translate it as a straight indirect object, we put it after the verb and before the direct object, don't we? So behold, some people brought him a paralyzed man, a paralytic, lying on a stretcher. And it's interesting, most translations don't just say him, they want to say to him. Even the NLT, which is a natural language translation, has to him here. Some people brought to him a paralyzed man on a mat. The thing that struck me when I saw this is that that's not very good English, is it? Because an indirect object, when it's by itself, it goes after the verb. Some men brought him a paralyzed man. And when we turn the indirect object into a prepositional phrase, it should go after the direct object. Some people brought a paralyzed man to him. Okay, that'd be English word order. But even the NLT, as natural language as it is, is putting the to him in front of the direct object. Now, why would they do that? So going back over to the Greek, we can see, and behold, some people brought, and then if we said a paralyzed man to him lying on a stretcher, who's lying on the stretcher? Well, again, in Greek, we know it's the paralyzed man who's lying on the stretcher. But if in English we said some people brought a paralyzed man to him lying on a stretcher, then it's the alto, it's the him that's lying on the, uh, on the stretcher. See what happens when you put the to him after man. This phrase gets hooked to the wrong person in English. Again, in Greek, it doesn't matter because you have the cases doing the linkage. If it was Jesus that was lying on a stretcher, then the line would have to be in the dative to match the alto. So this is just an example of how if you really follow English word order, you're going to miscommunicate, which is why the NLT doesn't do it. That we have to make sure that as we look at our phrases, that in English, they are in the right place to communicate the same meaning. So behold, some people brought, and I would, you know, I, my translation says brought to him as well. But you could say, and behold, some people brought him a paralyzed man lying on a stretcher. That is good English, and it communicates well. But what you can't say is that behold, some people brought a paralyzed man to him lying on a stretcher, because then in English, it's the alto who's lying on the stretcher. So it's just interesting. You have to really watch your order of phrases, and you have to balance it with whether you want to follow Greek word order or English word order.